Shalom, everyone. Uh, today we'll talk about the question that we had about uh, when the actual judgment is and what can we do about it, even if it's sealed, if it's something for not our good. Uh, but I wanted, maybe as an introduction, just to remind us uh, of, of the prophet Jonah. And according to the Talmud, uh, he was the boy that Elijah revived um, and brought back to life. And so it has always been very strange to me that at the very end of the book, um, he says that he wants to die. And Hashem says, are you, are you really sure that it's so bad that you want to die? Uh, and so it would be strange to ask somebody who was brought back from the dead uh, if he really wants to die. And uh, I think that we all know that the result was that he didn't die because Hashem uh, told him that it's more blessed to be alive. And so um, we, we learn from that, that there is judgment, but there's also a purpose in our life. And I think that that will help us understand a little bit more about the depth of the judgment. And so the Gemara and Rosh Hashanah has a, a discussion about um, what the actual sentence means and uh, if there is any chance during the year for change or improvement uh, or God forbid the opposite. And so the Gemara explains, as it is taught in the Brayta, all are judged on Rosh Hashanah and their sentence is sealed on Yom Kippur. This is the statement of Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Yehuda says, all are judged on Rosh Hashanah and their sentence is sealed each in its own time. On Passover, which we learned yesterday, the sentence of, is sealed concerning grain, on Shavuot concerning fruits, and on the festival of Sukkot, they are judged concerning water and rain. And mankind is judged on Rosh Hashanah and the sentence is sealed on Yom Kippur. So that's about the general public and the nations, etc. But now they go into a little bit deeper what happens with the individual. So Rabbi Yossi Omer, Adan Nidon Mechol Yom, that a person is judged every day, as it is stated in Job chapter 7, verse 18. You visit him every morning. And Rabbi Natan quotes the same exact verse, uh, the second part of it, where it says that a, a person is judged every hour, um, as it is stated you try him every moment. And so uh, the word rega today is actually a minute, but but the idea is that there's constant uh, change. So uh, let's just give it as an example of, of a bank. So uh, right now you have $100 in the bank, but in five minutes you might have $10 in the bank and uh, or, or the opposite, you might have 200 because things change all the time. So the same thing is with Hashem's accounting is that uh, if you did something good, then you are, improve the situation. And if you did something not good, the angel that you created by by that deed um, reports and basically uh, says that we need to decrease uh, the blessing. And so that's really what we're talking about, the, the blessing. We're not talking so much about the idea that we appear before the court every single moment. That's not possible. And so... With this uh, understanding of the Gemara, which Rabbi Melamed will quote again and again, I will just uh, change the screen to that. And here we are. So even though judgment is inscribed on Rosh Hashanah and sealed on Yom Kippur, one's behavior during the rest of the year still has significant impact because the Shefa of life allotted on Rosh Hashanah descends to the world gradually, via Shabbatot and Rosh Hashim. So uh, this is a very deep um, Kabbalistic idea. I didn't understand it fully until I read some of the examples. Um, so uh, on Shabbat, we don't say prayers of forgiveness, but in Rosh Chodesh, he's going to mention that there's a custom to say Tefillat Yom Kippur Katan, to fast on Erev Rosh Chodesh, uh, and that's uh, how it's manifested today. Uh, as it manifests, it can be diverted toward good or evil. The principle is that the holy days are meant to draw blessing into the world, each day in accordance with its special character. Accompanying the blessing is judgment so that the blessing reaches the deserving. Since the blessing descends via Rosh Hashim, the, the new month, they too are days of judgment and thus propitious propitious times for repentance, atonement, and forgiveness. There is a custom among the pious to repent on the day before Rosh Chodesh, also known as Yom Kippur Katan. Shabbat too is a holy and blessed, and through it, blessing extends 
to the six weekdays. Uh, one opinion is that it's the six coming weekdays, but another opinion is that it's from Wednesday before Shabbat until Tuesday after Shabbat. So that this blessing manifests properly, one should repent on Shabbat, albeit out of love, good cheer, and optimism without pain. So that's why we don't say prayers of Tachanun on Shabbat. Uh, homiletically, the word Shabbat is related to the word Tshuva, the same three letters of the of, of the of the root letters. The bounty that descends through Shabbat and Rashi Chodeshim continues its descent via the weekdays. Each of it has its own special sanctity. And so even we, when we go three times a day to, to Shul, uh, as we mentioned in the Gemara, we can, be, um, we can have that com conversation again and again and again during the day uh, and improve ourselves or God forbid the opposite. The judgments passed from Rosh Hashanah, Shabbat, and every other day do not alter the judgment inscribed and sealed at the beginning of the year. For while judgment is inscribed and sealed at the beginning of the year, the way it is implemented is not, and the implementation has significant ramifications, for better or for worse. So let's skip to the examples, and then I think that will clarify it, because it helped me understand better. What is an example of for better? Let us say that the Jews were completely wicked as of Rosh Hashanah, and therefore were allotted only a small amount of rain. Later they repented. It is not possible to send more rain, for that decree has already been made. Rather, God brings the rain at the optimal times on the land that needs it, depending on the land. Thus, minimal rains can still bring great blessing. And the opposite, what is an example of for worse? Let us say that the Jews were completely righteous as of Rosh Hashanah, and therefore a lot of rain was allotted to them. Later they relapsed. It is not possible to send less rain for the decree, especially a good decree, has already been made. Rather, God brings it at the worst times on land that does not need it. Uh, and that's what, actually what the Yom, uh, Kohen Gadol prays on Yom Kippur, that the houses of the people of the Shavon will not become their, their graves because they lived in a place where there was always landslides and uh, other such thing. Even today, there's places where it says quicksand and, and beware. And and uh, so it, it's fenced in, uh, especially, I don't know about other places, but in Israel, it's uh, near Chovot and, and Gedera, there's such places. Um, and so if it rains too much in one place, that will cause a flood and punishment. And so again, that's a good example for worse. The ideal sequence is as follows. We spent during the month of El, sorry, we repent during the month of El and accept God's kingship on Rosh Hashanah, leading to a good initial judgment. We continue to ascend spiritually by repenting on Yom Kippur, leading to a better final judgment. With this momentum, we continue to walk in God's ways. We absorb the Shefa of holiness on Shabbat, holidays on Rosh Chodesh, thus increasing the illumination and blessing present in every day, hour, and minute. And I just wanted to finish that uh, Rabbi Gladstein gave a class um, a while ago about Yom Kippur Katan, and he said that uh, out of the 12 months of the year, there's actually four months that we don't do Yom Kippur Katan. So the the, the acronym is Chatat, uh, which is like the sin offering. So, um, so Chet stands for Cheshvan, Tet stands for Tevet, uh, Aleph stands for Iyar, uh, those three is because in, in the preceding days we don't say Tachnan, so how can we fast on Yom Kippur, on, on Hanukkah um, on, uh, and during the month of Tishrei and during the month of Nisan? And the fourth one, which is a little bit weird, is Erev Rosh Hashanah. That's the Taf, Tishrei, because um, on Erev Rosh Hashanah, even though there was a custom to fast, uh, we are going into already the days of, of repentance, and so... There are a couple of explanations that I didn't like any of them, why we don't uh, uh, do Yom Kippur Katan before Rosh Hashanah, but uh, we'll leave that as an open question for contemplation. And we'll stop here.